Well, good afternoon, everybody, and we'll try to keep us awake as we get to the end of our program, and it's a real pleasure and honor to be here today. I've gotten uh, very excited about this procedure, as we've seen in so many procedures. We have, uh, most of our patients who are unhappy when we operate on them is because they don't see clearly. They've lost something. They've lost some of their distance, but they've gained. And that's what we've talked about. What's the balance of gain and loss? And so what we're going to talk about today are the early clinical trials. It's something where we don't seem to lose, and we do gain. And hopefully in the future, as we learn more paradigms and learn more, uh, more about how to make this work even better, we will have even more gains. This is the, I'm a, a consultant for Ace Vision Group. So the concept of what Anne Marie so eloquently explained to us today, I think that was a, a wonderful, uh, beautiful explanation of what we're trying to do in terms of restoring, and hopefully restoring, some natural accommodation. And this is the laser race procedure with the Visiolite system. We call it a disruptive technology in that it's really disrupting our thinking. It's something brand new that we're talking about. And we're trying to talk about the visiodynamic functionality of the eye. We, this is performed with an erbium yang laser. And it's creating regions, presumably, of increased pliability of the sclera. There are no alterations of the shape of the sclera, cornea, or crystalline lens. And by increasing the scleral pliability, it's presumed to increase the net forces of the ciliary muscle, thus facilitating dynamic accommodation. It's done with a fiber optic probe, and the initial ablation is at 30 hertz, 50 millijoules and it's done right through the transconjunctival approach into the sclera. And at the very end, as you get deep, you can fine-tune it down to 10 hertz, 40 millijoules, so you can go slower and get exactly the depth that is needed. And as you can see, uh, is there, this is the pointer, the recommended uh, matrix pattern would be right here. You can see one, two, three, and then the fourth spot would be here, five, here. Six, seven, eight, nine. So it's in a little matrix, a diamond matrix pattern. So this is first the mark of the eyes. The eye is covered with a contact lens. And the mark, if you remember what Anne Marie showed us, you can see the these are going to be the zones that are going to be treated. Let's go forward. Okay. So with the laser. These have been treated, and you can see the erbium laser just goes right through. And it makes a very small, sort of a pinpoint opening. And depth, and, and with the, the depth that we need, where we can actually see a certain hue, a certain light blue color in there. And that would be what the treatment looks like. This will show us how to resolve certain issues cosmetically. This is a collagen. So the collagen is actually instilled underneath the conjunctiva into the openings. It doesn't have to go in each one, it just fills it up. And we'll show you why that seems to aid in terms of the cosmesis and potentially the effect of the procedure. I'm trying to advance this. Let's see. Okay. So you can see if these are the scars, then the collagen can come in here and potentially inhibit the scar. So in three days after the surgery, this would be before the collagen was administered, and this would be after. This is what it would look like. So cosmetically, it is appealing. You can't really see the, the uh, marks that were created with the original laser. Now, as we've talked about with everything we've uh, learned today, operating on visual access comes with issues. And the nice thing about this potential procedure for us is that it's not performed on the visual access. 
and you can still perform future corneal or cataract surgery. It also may have an additive effect to improve results for monovision or mini monovision later with laser rays at the same time. It may be more effective than just monovision alone. It could also have an additive effect for presbyopia correcting lenses, accommodating IOLs, or prior monofocal pseudophagic emetropes. It may provide better distance vision for post-LASIK patients with slight hyperopia postoperatively when a second eczema laser treatment on the cornea can be performed. Now, I'm going to talk to you about basically two studies. The first is a conglomeration of a lot of patients over the course of the last 10 years. When I first saw this procedure in 2000, and I saw the patient the next day, and I said, oh my god, this patient's reading, this works, what is this? So this is going to talk about the criteria that's over a multitude of countries and several iterations of the laser procedure. But the distance corrected near vision had to be 2050 or worse, log mark point four. The best corrected distance had to be equal to 2040 or better in both eyes. So this is the, this is the original pilot study. You have less than a half a diopter difference between the manifest and cycloplegic refractive and an accommodative amplitude of two and a half diopters or less, with less than a half a diopter of astigmatism. The, these patients could have had prior refractive surgery. You wanted ideal pressures between 10 and 22, no ocular pathology. 18 months of follow-up will be presented, and the ages were 37 to 67. The objective dynamic accommodation was measured with a COAS HD and eye trace in the SA. And you can see that where this is, is in South America. So South America is here, Italy in here, Canada, and in Mexico. There were 134 eyes of 67 patients, which were all performed bilaterally. And again, there were several iterations of this ablation technique. It's changed over the years up to 18 months follow-up for a high percentage. And again, we talked about what, we, we used to, what we're used to measure, and what was observed was a clinically and statistically significant change in the objectively measured amplitude of accommodation in all patients, which ranged from 1 to 1.75 diopter in average. And as you can see, it remained stable over the 18 months for these 67 patients. The results stimulated more trials because it was very exciting to see that something could really hold for 18 months and patients were happy. So the, the tri trial that we're going to show now is the uh, Laser Race Taiwan Clinical Trial, which is a prospective IRB monitored evaluation of near and intermediate vision and a patient Q quality of life satisfaction questionnaire before and after. This is performed in Taipei and Taiwan and Changchun Chang Memorial Hospital with Dr. Ma and Son as principal investigators. Tracy studies performed the CatQuest questionnaire, 45 patient sub subjects. We will be presenting uh, 15 patients. And the follow-up is a day, three days, a week, a month, and up to 24 months. The inclusion criteria are greater than or equal to 40 years of age who have a demonstrated loss of accommodative function, and with their best corrected, distan best corrected distance, their near vision is 2050 or worse. They have good uncorrected distance vision with less than a diameter of, of refractive astigmatism, healthy eyes, and they could have prior refractive surgery. So these are going to be the first 15 months with a minimum of six month post-op. As far as the description, they have been separated out just to see if there's different issues between a prior emetrope, a prior myope, hyperope. So an emetrope is within a plus one to a minus, a plus 0.1 to a minus 0.1 of emetrope. So it's really a tight emetrope. Emetrope of myope would be a 0.1 to a minus 0.5. Uh, hyperope would be a plus 0.1 to a plus 0.5, and this would have been somebody who would have been a laser vision corrected myope in the past. As far as the demographics go, they're very equal, male, female, ages, all had excellent vision to start. 
Now, in terms of distance vision, everybody maintained their 2020 vid or better visual status. So there is no loss of best corrected distance vision. And this is all uncorrected. So there's no loss of their uncorrected because they all were seeing well to start with. Their intermediate range, now 93% achieved 2030 or better, and 80% achieved 2020 or better, intermediate. Near vision, 86% achieved 2030 or better, and 80% 2025, and 46% achieved 2020 or better out of these 15. The best corrected vision is the same because they pretty much had the same vision. They all had very good uncorrected and the best corrected was virtually the same as their uncorrected. 95% uh, of patients had an increase in the measured amplitude of accommodation. As you can see, most fell within this bell curve of the increase of, inc of, a, of the amplitude of accommodation. The laser ACE does not affect stereo acuity at all. And it might have a potential restorative ocular health effect where the pressure dropped uh, about, two, uh, about two. And in fact, I saw three patients recently in my practice uh, who had been performed in the last, I guess, six years. And every single one of them had pressures of 10. And uh, it was very interesting that they all had perfect pressures of 10. Uh, the CatQuest Global Question A was, do you experience that your vision is giving you difficulty in any way in your everyday life? Well, the majority had some to very great difficulty pre-op, and at six months, the majority have very little to no difficulty. Are you satisfied or dissatisfied with your present vision? The majority are rather very dissatisfied pre-op, majority are fairly to very satisfied at the six month. All patients improve from very great difficulty to some difficulty, or to some difficulty, no difficulty, in all of these questions. Reading text, face, recognizing faces, seeing prices, reading text on TV, and seeing to do their daily tasks. You can see this woman preoperatively, how she had to hold her arm, and, uh, and as we know, she didn't have a long enough arm because she was a woman, as we learned today. But after her post-op three months, this is where she could read the material. So again, went from somewhat very difficult to no difficulty in many of the tasks. And this is a very interesting video here, which uh, it's not playing. Oh, there it is. So he's asking him, how did you have to read before we did the procedure? This is one week later. And he's showing how far away and how difficult it was for him to see. And he says, how do you see now? And he says, in fact, I can even hold it closer. And I can read this material this close up. And he's saying it was this far away, and now it's this close. So that's at one week. And you can see his vision went from uncorrected uh, near vision in 2050 down to 2025. He maintained his distance and his intermediate of 2015 and his Intermediate went from 2025 to 2015. So in conclusion, the patients uh, that we presented in this early trial, one to six months post-op, achieved improvement of both near and intermediate vision of two to four lines of improved their reading vision. No clinically significant loss of distance, a very high patient satisfaction post-operatively, and the accommodative amplitude continued improvement from one to three months, but stabilized at six months. All patients had an excellent restoration of intermediate vision. Lens hardening in older patients may potentiate lower responses in near vision than younger groups. So we have to take a really good look at that. But does laser ACE work? The early data from the pilot studies in Taiwan and Taiwan clinical trial indicate yes. It does have a potential positive effect on accommodation with no change in refractive status. It has all of these benefits of the untouched lens, ciliary muscle stability, no devices, and potential to delay disease progression. So unlike any other procedure, it's less invasive in that it's not performed on the visual axis compared to with the other corneal procedures. It can be a companion 
without the refractive and lens surgeries, without any refractive compromise for life and course of vision, and could see foreseeable other potential health benefits for restoring accommodative muscular function. Younger patients are, will be excluded uh, from studies because it's very difficult to know that they, could, that they couldn't demonstrate perceptible change. So the next studies will limit patients to 50 years and higher. And uh, the, the preliminary results from this study were exciting enough, providing the basis for a multi-center single-arm IRB monitor clinical trial now going on in Shanghai.